Here it is, the HTC Vive. It is one day after pre-orders opened, it is April 6th. This arrived at about noon, and I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now, a lot of you are still waiting months away or that your Vive is lost in the mail somewhere, payments aren't transferring, everything like that. So I feel very fortunate being among the first wave to receive the CB1. Um, and I pre-ordered within three minutes of pre-orders opening, so you can calculate out about that time of arrival and all of that. So, as you can tell, this is being filmed in stereoscopic 3D. So there's multiple ways that you could view this in 3D. If you are good at crossing your eyes, you can do the parallel eye method, where you look at an image or focus your eyes at something that's behind you and then look down at your monitor without actually unfocusing your eyes and the images will hopefully merge together into one three-dimensional image. Or if you have a Gear VR, you can download an app that makes it work like a Google Cardboard and you could just watch the video that way. Or if you had the good old Google Cardboard which is a very simple thing where you just put your phone right into the back. There's millions of different kinds of Google Cardboards out there. This is a particular Force Awakens themed one. With this being a VR headset and all three is appropriate. Now I haven't even opened this box up myself yet. So I'll be in for some surprises and I'll do some exaggerated motions um, like they did in the old 3D films, to be like, whoa, whoa, that kind of thing. So I'll be doing some of that just to play with the fact. So here we go. Open it up. It's a very nice glossy box with the masked out UV coating of the Vive there on the front. And some kind of soundproof padding looking material here, which actually is very good for setting stuff after you take it out of the box. Set that aside. And right away, you can see that they have the instructions. It's just a gigantic piece of paper that is two-sided in lots of different languages. It is the Get Started Guide and I'm sure you'll find PDFs or something of this available online. And from what I can tell, since this is the first time I'm actually seeing this too, it's just some of the usual information about where to set up the Lighthouse base stations, uh, where to go to download software and everything that should be in the box and I'm a huge fan of visual guides of what's in the box. I hate it when it just has a list of things and you have to guess what it looks like. There's a lot of weird stuff that comes in here. And right away I can see that there's a lot of fingerprints and things. I mean it's not really that big of a deal. I'll just wash it off and there's plastic casing over stuff that will peel off. Not a big of a deal, but it is kind of weird. It's like, oh no, other human beings touched this before me. Unbelievable. So, just an observation. So here are the motion controllers. And this is actually the first time I have ever touched this version of the controller. So this feels pretty amazing right now. I heard from the Pre, a difference between the Pre and the CV1 is that the, uh, there was padding added to the bottom here. So here's a good close-up three-dimensional shot of these. Um, so there is like rubber coating on the bottom. I'm afraid to pull anything, press anything, because I believe they come partially charged. So the instant you push any buttons, they will start trying to synchronize with the headset that's sitting right here in the side. Feels just as comfortable from what I've heard but I'll get more into that later. So, motion controls. Here are the two lighthouse stations. So I'm sure you're aware this is something that makes the Vive unique from all other VR systems at the moment. 
These are used to track your movement throughout the entire room. It tracks the headset, tracks the controllers, and maybe in the future, maybe tracking some other things too. So here are lighthouse boxes. And I'm very scared that I'm going to drop these. And here's a close-up shot of the ports in the back, which I believe is power and a sync button, a sync port, and yeah, power, sync, and the mounting system in the back. So there you go. And there is a threaded mount on the bottom and a threaded mount in the back. All different orientations. So I'm going to be using the one in the back. Oh, and weight-wise, it's probably a little over a pound. Maybe about a pound, I don't know. I'm never good at judging that. Um, where do I go next? Oh, I see where this is going. Might as well just jump right to the headset. Comes in a bag. And this is my first time actually touching one of these as well. Impressive. So it comes with the huge cable already attached to it. I can't remember what this cable's called, but it's basically the cable. Anytime people talk about VR and the cable, it's the big huge one that attaches to a headset that you'll be continuously tripping over or claiming that it doesn't affect your experience at all or things like that. So <laughs> I love the lighting. Um, so it is covered in holes all over the place, which are actually the sensors that the lighthouse is shooting lasers out, and this is finding the lasers and doing the tracking. Um, lenses in the back, it has a cable in it, or it has a, not a cable, a uh, plastic film over it at the moment. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. This is very light as well. I mean, everything is much lighter than I ever imagined it being. And even the chaperone camera comes with a little thing that you peel off. Uh, and then the headphone jack and mounting system for your head, strap system, whatever. And you got the USB 3 HDMI and power. Set that aside. Okay. Now I get to embarrass myself on video as I pull things out. This is a very tightly packed box. There's a lot of super satisfying, like airtight moments. Like it just glides down. Oh, yeah. Now it's kind of a mystery where these other things are hiding. This is very heavy. Okay. Um, underneath the lighthouse box are what looks like, oh, wall mounts for actually screwing into the walls and mounting the lighthouse stations to be above you and in the corners. And these are the two power adapters for electricity. They do need to have outlets nearby to do that. And this is the monstrous sink cable. This is an optional cable that is only used if the lighthouses cannot see one another when they're in the corners of the room. If you have an obstruction and they can't communicate directly, you use this cable, you string it around the room and you connect it to, but it is optional. You don't have to connect them. This cable is extremely long too. I can't remember how long, but it's more than enough. 
that's all that was in here. Uh, also, the reason I don't have a green screen going on right now with the chroma key is because the blue kind of identifying color of the Vive conflicts a lot with the chroma settings that I had set up and I didn't really want to mess with that or do any kind of masking or post processing so I'm kind of lazy but uh, it's pretty nice there's nothing else in here and very cool extra detail is there's actually the Vive logo it's like a, a tessellated pattern I really don't know if this will show up um, yeah, there's a little bit, but yeah, the logo is actually a repeating pattern all the way throughout here in sort of a UV coded. It's awesome. I love extra little details like that. Then this final mystery box. Maybe it's a personal thank you letter from chat, but no. It is the breakout box. This is the little box that you use to connect the headset to your computer. The headset goes to the box, and then the box goes to the computer. The technical reasons for that I'm not totally aware of, but I do know that it allows for some conversions to happen. For example, you can use the display port um, to connect the Vive to your computer, whereas the HDMI is what comes straight out of the headset. So that would go to here and then display port would come out of that. And that's probably a solution I'm going to try to use. Um, and this also has some kind of extra mounting equipment for that. Here's an additional power adapter. Um, there's a lot of electricity oriented things going on with this headset instead of using a lot of USB cables, which I believe the Rift uses. Um, this is takes straight power right out of the wall in exchange for fewer USB. And then here is a gasket for the, um, the headset, the kind of foam piece. And from what I heard, I think it comes with two. Yeah. Maybe there's two in here. Yeah, there's like narrow face and wide face. Sounds pretty judgmental to me. And then it also has a little lens washing uh, microfiber cloth. And what is this? I believe these are cables for going from the breakout box to your computer. So this is a little HDMI to HDMI, and this is a little USB 3 to USB 3, and this is not entirely sure. I think this is a headphone extension to the back opening a bag it scares me a little. Um, yeah, it looks like it's probably an extension for the uh, for the headset or for the uh, headphones. My best guess is that it's something that goes on to here to maybe extend it a little bit further. Interesting. I'll have to play around with that. Well, that is everything that's inside this gigantic box. So I'm going to have loads of fun hitching all this up and playing it and hopefully streaming and producing more videos on this channel. So I hope you enjoyed this in 3D, and I hope to do more virtual reality content soon. Thanks for watching, and look forward to future videos from myself. I'd just like to make a couple corrections after reviewing the tapes. I realize I made a couple errors, and before the internet goes crazy, 
Um, at the beginning, I said that it's a day after pre-order, which is not true. I meant to say it's a day after the release of the Vive. So it is the 6th today. And then the other thing is that I missed some items in the box where the motion controllers came inside. Uh, you also get the USB chargers. So they each have their own chargers. You'll see in the box that you have a lot of these kinds of things because both of the lighthouses need to be plugged in and charged. Both of the controllers, which are battery powered, but you need to charge them at some point, um, have the two adapters and then the USB cables that come with those. And it was hidden in a thing underneath. And this is not an adapter for, uh, for extending the headphone jack in the back. These are the earbuds. I completely forgot that this comes with earbuds. And this little extra detail that I didn't know about until actually looking into it a little bit more is that the earbuds use a ribbon-shaped cable instead of kind of a tube-shaped one. I don't know if that makes a huge difference, but I tend to like the more ribbon-shaped things because they wind better and they stay together better, in my opinion. Um, other than that, I don't think I've discovered any other errors or things that I've made. There you go. Enjoy!